So in factory number one here in Spain for Correa, we're at the Hypatier factory. What, do, what machines do they make here? Uh, made here are the Experta, the Norma and the Norma L. Okay, great thing that stands out straight away, five year warranty. Is that applicable for all models? That's applicable across all the machines in the Correa range. Okay, let's go and have a look. So machine number one, Ian, what have we got here? This is the Norma L60 travelling column machine. And with it being a travelling column, what's, what's the advantage to that? main advantage of the machine is with the travelling column is the fact that we can go up to 8 metres in the x-axis. And I was also thinking on the fact that you can, you can put more weight on the table because the table's not actually moving, is it? Of course, because it's not moving, we can go up to a much higher weight. Now, I notice we've got a 90 degree uh, angle here on the head. What sort of heads do you offer on these Norma L machines? There are five different types of head on this machine. Um, the head we have on here at the moment is a UDG head, which is a 0.2 indexing head. Um, we can go to an orthogonal head, the OAD, and we can go to a UDG, uh, as long with the, the more common types of heads, the manual type of heads. All for positioning, not simultaneous machining? All for position, no simultaneous machining. And, and, the, and what's the biggest machine in the Norma L? How can you go? Norma L is an 8 metre machine, it's the Norma L80. And before we move on, who's going to buy one of these machines? What are they going to be making? Um, these type of machines at the moment go into the sort of marine industry, um, but also people who are looking for large capacity. I can see here we're doing some novel horizontal turning, which is pretty different. This is a new development for ourselves. Um, we believe, I certainly believe, there's a, there is a, um, a market in the UK for this type of machine that we're doing. OK, let's move on to uh, the Experta. So this is the Experta here. Now, this, this looks like a significantly smaller machine, but does it come bigger than this? It does, yes. It comes up to a four and a half metre bed. And why are you going to buy one of these as opposed to something like the Norma L that we just looked at? Well, this is a bed type machine, so it is a slightly different, different configuration. Um, but realistically, it comes down to cost. Because when you say it's a bed type machine, so the other machine was a travelling column. Now the movement here is happening on the bed, isn't it? That's correct. It is the bed that moves. And when you say cost, are we, are we then looking at um, you know, a machine that is, is significantly, significantly compromised in its quality? Or are you still building this with the same same points in mind? No, certainly not. This, this, the fundamentals of this machine are based on the Norma, which is, its, if you like, its sister machine. So it is still a very robust and well-built machine. And the head on this machine, again, as before, can you have various options? Yes, on this machine at the moment, this is the U22 head, which is a manu actually a manual head. Um, not so popular now in the UK market, um, but we, yes, we do go up to, we have four different types on this machine. And, and do, you, do you have ISO 50 on this? Is it a 50 taper as well? It is a 50 taper machine, yes. And then the tool changer, with it being a smaller machine, uh, maybe for smaller machining environments, what, what can you go up to? We can go up to 60 tools on this machine um, and we can go down as low as eight, eight tools if needed. And on just looking at the inside track there, call it, that, that's like a channel. Is that where you put a swarf conveyor for the extraction of swarf? That would be where you'd put a swarf conveyor, yes. On this machine, the customer obviously hasn't gone for the swarf conveyor. Heidenheim control, standard option? Standard option across all the machines, yes. OK, so we looked at the Norma L, which is the, the bigger machine, uh, and the travelling column style. This is the Experta, which, is a, which the movement is on the bed. Let's go and check out the Norma. Certainly. So Ian, the Norma machine, this isn't the Norma L. What's the difference between the Norma L and this Norma? Mainly the configuration. This is a bed type machine, whereas the Norma L is a travelling column machine. So it's good to see this machine with the guards off here because it does give you a real insight into the, the fact that it's a two-piece casting machine, how the ram is supported. It does look like a rigid construction. Yeah, very rigid construction and a step up, if you like, from the Experta. That's what I was going to say because we've looked at the Experta. Does, is this machine 
the next it is the bigger machine of the expert has it got bigger uh, axis capability can you is it generally a bigger machine it is generally a bigger machine um, the x-axis is actually the same size and it does use the same casting on the x-axis the y-axis goes up to now 1.25 meters and the z-axis goes up to 1.5 meters and I noticed that the column on this Norma again is much bigger than the experta so that that sort of supports the argument for a bigger machine with a bit more rigidity perhaps certainly uh, I mean the the, um, the actual column itself is uh, is the largest in its in its um, in its competition, if you like. And will you sell a lot more of these Norma machines than you will Norma Ls and Experters? Is this a good good middle ground machine? I would say in the UK market, this probably is the middle ground machine that, that people go to out of the three machines. And just to quickly summarise the options on this type of machine, what, what can you get for the for the spindle when it comes to speed, power? Is it ISO 50 and the tool changer? 50 50 taper, 6,000 RPM at the moment. Um, is there a lot of power there? We can go up to 990 newton meters on this machine. And the tool changer? Tool changer up to 60 tools again. Is, is that a modular as well? Can you can you go for less? It, it is modular. We start we can start off at 30. We then walk up to 40 or 60, and you can change that as you go. Okay, I want to have a walk around this factory now with you because there's lots to see here. But fundamentally, what we've checked out is all the machines that are made here, and we've also obviously seen them here where they're guarding off. So it is good to see. But let's have a look around the, the rest of the factory. <laughs> And this is why we come to factories like this, Ian, to see these machines in their makeup. Here we've got a Norma and an Experta column, correct? Yes, we have, yes. And I think what you can see there is the difference between the two columns, um, the size of the column of the Norma, which we've got laid in front of us here, and obviously the Experta behind it. And the Norma's obviously much bigger because that is the machines that we've been talking about, which are the, the middle of the road machines, bigger than the Experta. Certainly, yeah, it certainly is. OK, well, it's been a fantastic first day. We're going to have to move out of here now. We got here late. Everybody's gone home. Let's go and have a cold beer and look forward to tomorrow. Ian, day two here in beautiful, sunny Spain. Can you tell us what we're going to see here at this head, at the headquarters this morning? Well, obviously, Paul, yeah, we're here today at the headquarters in Burgos. Um, this is where, basically, they do all the machining for all of the group. So from where we were yesterday, all the machining for those machines gets done here, um, as well as, obviously, our larger machines. So today we're going to see large bridge-type bridge machines, gantry machines, and travelling column machines, but larger than what we saw yesterday. Can't wait. Let's get into it. So what have we got in here then, Ian? In this facility here, this is where we machine all of our components. Um, so basically from raw castings through to the finished machine and grinding. Um, and as you can see on this machine, we're machining the Norma base from the machines we saw yesterday. And they're actually your machines, the Correa machines, aren't they? These are our machines. They're actually, pro they were prototypes originally. So as the machine's going through its life, we can obviously monitor it and now make improvements where we see that. Oh, okay, so this would have been the first FPM machine, for example? This is the first FPM machine, yeah, and then up, further up the shop we've got a Versa MW. And, and I, I suppose that enables you then, if, 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 if when the machine's being used there are things you could modify to make it better when you build the new machines, that's what you do? That's correct, and as you'll see later on, that's what we've done on some of the other models. So what machine have we got here, Ian, and what are they actually doing to it? This is a Fox machine. It's a double column bridge type machine. Um, obviously, at the moment, it's in assembly, so we're just, by the looks of it, we're clocking in the head at the moment. Well, how big do these, the Fox range go? What's the, what's the extent of the, the range? This machine, in this configuration, goes up to 8 metres in the X-axis, 2.5 in the Y-axis, and 1.5 in the Z. And again, can you have multiple heads on it, cha head changes? Yeah, the difference from yesterday is we can actually have more heads now, so we go up to nine heads on this model of machine. And what's great about coming into factories like this, this is what we want to see. Uh, you know, we've got here, this is the base of a machine or is this the column of, of a machine? This is actually the gantry of the machine. So on top at the moment is the saddle, which obviously the ram will sit on. You can see you've got a huge ball screw on there, four supports on the, 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 the top and the bottom. 
Yeah, and also I think it's important to say the oversized linear um, linear ways as well on there. Yeah, they are they are pretty thick, aren't they? And is this the case for all of the machines here? They're, we'll see this today, but they're all put together. Everything is assembled here. Everything is assembled at this plant, yes. So what have we actually got here, and What is this machine? This looks like a huge column. This machine is a, an Axia column floor type machine. It looks to me like we've just got a huge column. There's no, there's no table, there's no the bed on the machine. How does it all work? It can actually be bought with the, uh, without the, the table there, but most customers obviously do put a table and either mount it direct to the floor or will sink it into the floor. So is the idea that you're, the modularity of it, you can, you can kind of build the machine up to whatever uh, platform you need yeah to a certain extent I mean again this machine can come with nine different heads which you can have all nine on the machine at once um, but it does give you the option of swapping and changing the heads as you go along and how big could that x-axis move this x-axis at the moment is up to 25 meters so it's a, it's a big machine for pretty big applications then. very big applications or mounting several applications on, on the same table and by looking at this here, Ian, that, that ram looks like it's fully supported. It's a box-in-box -box construction. Is that, is that right? That's correct, yes. Supported all the way around the ram. Because some rams that we see are actually bolted to the sides of the column, but I can see why that looks like a much better construction. Yeah, definitely. It gives us a lot more rigidity. And for this type of or style of machine, where are you aiming? What, what's your audience? Um, these machines will go into large power generation, um, large engines that we're looking to do, large fabrications that need machining on them. Because the one behind us here actually has a big rotary table with it, doesn't it? That's going to a customer. That's, that's correct, yeah. It's a rotary table capable of holding 30 tonnes. And then we've got another Fox machine behind us here. But what I'm really interested in is some of the other models down. So let's go have a look further down. Now this is interesting, Ian. This is a slightly different configured machine. What is it? This is a HVM65. And you've got here, instead of the, the kind of traditional what we've seen earlier, like column and, and a bed, you've got a column and a bed, but you've got another casting in the middle, so it's a three-piece. That's correct, yeah. What it allows us to do is um, we've got 6.5 metres on the x-axis on this, but because we don't necessarily want to go so high, um, this machine actually only goes up to 2.5 metres in the z-axis. But it does allow us, because of the configuration and how, it's, how it is manufactured, it allows us up to 2 metres in the y-axis as well. Uh, and I, I, would, I might be wrong, but it would look to me, if in built in this way, it's probably more rigid than a ram, is it? It certainly is more rigid than a ram, yes. And as you, as you can see, the, um, the, the y-axis will go backward and forward, moves backward and forward. And I see here on the x-axis, Ian, we've actually got five guideways and an extra support at the back. That's correct, yeah. We've got the rigidity in the three at the front and then the two at the back for support. You would take this machine on um, probably over a Norma, to be honest, looking for extra rigidity. And what, what's going to come with it? That, that looks like a fixed table there. Can you have a rotary table or could you have both and just move the x-axis to the part? Yes, you can have fixed table, rotary table, rotary table and a fixed table, two, three, four rotary tables. It really is modular. Total flexibility. Now, that's quite big, but what we're going to see next is absolutely huge. I can't wait. And th this has got to be the jewel in the crown, isn't it? This, this is some machine. Yeah, this is uh, one of our exceptionally large machines. This is the Versa MW gantry type machine. So what's the extent? How big does this machine go? This actual machine is a 17.5 metre in the x-axis. Um, we've got 7.8 metres in the y-axis, 2 metres in the z-axis with a further 2.5 metres in the w-axis. So that means total, uh, call it that, Z is going to be over four meters. Oh, four point five meters, yeah. Are you going to sell one of these in the UK? And is there is there a market for this size of machine? I mean, it's absolutely huge. There is a certain market for this type of machine in the UK, yes. And what this shows is the breadth of what Korea can manufacture and make here from Spain, doesn't it? It certainly does, yeah. I mean, this model we can go up to seven meters, with the restriction being the roof. Um, that, that's the main restriction we've got. And would the head technology apply to this as well? So, you know, whether you, you want five axis simultaneous or, or more axis movement, can this machine handle that? This machine can handle all of the heads that we do. This actual machine has got a, uh, a head changer on it for two heads. And you have a big rotary table, I believe, is, is what this machine has actually been sold with. Yeah, it's got a fixed table underneath it with also a four metre rotary table. We've seen a lot here in the last two days, Ian. For DTS UK, th this principle is a massive part of your business, isn't it? Oh, certainly. This is probably one of our, our first primary principles. And the types of machines that we've seen here and the technology that's on show, it allows you to get into many different markets, doesn't it? From power generation, rail, aerospace, all of those types of uh, applications. It certainly does. We've covered the full, all the sectors that we're, machine tools are involved in.
selling machines like this, half the battle is getting the, getting the order, which is obviously what you handle, in. But then it's supporting it. How did DTS UK go about supporting their customers with this type of technology? DTS have got something quite unique for an overseas principal. Um, we've got a permanent service manager on, on site uh, in, an, in Dennis White. So Dennis, is it, is it advantageous to have you based here in Spain for DTS UK? Absolutely, Paul. Um, from a technical point of view, I've got everything to hand here. Um, if a UK customer has technical difficulties uh, and I need an answer quickly, I have the people and the infrastructure around me to get that information within five minutes. So basically, if an engineer calls DTS UK for service and support, they'll come straight through to you here in Spain, correct? Absolutely. Um, from a point of view of, of, of the, um, the workings of it, it, it really is no different than working in an office in the UK. Um, I have a UK phone here in Spain, so that our customers, our engineers are phoning a UK number. Um, and, and as soon as a problem comes through to you, you've got all the team of people around here, you've got access to spare parts, access to machines on the, on the shop floor. You can kind of do everything. It's, it's really, I, I can't see any reason why it isn't better. Absolutely, uh, you, you know, I mean, applications, uh, spares, technical queries, everything is to hand. Um, you know, going back to how, how I used to work from the UK, um, you rely heavily on emails and telephone calls. Here, if I have a, a query which I need to answer very quickly, I can go and sit on the guy's desk and say, give me the answer, <laughs> you know, it's, it, you can't buy that. You know, you really can't. It's, it's, it's fantastic. What we have also seen here today in the Crayer factory is the fact they do absolutely everything here from the machining of the castings right the way to the assembly and the design. Also the spindle technology. Tell us a little bit about that. Is that all done here too? Absolutely. absolutely. Every, everything um, is, is done in-house. Um, within the factory they have clean room facilities. Um, all, all the heads are built in-house. Um, some of the spindles are are bought out, um, such as the, the high frequency spindles, um, but all of the gear heads and the UADs, uh, OADs, all of the all, all of that te technology is is built within the correct the Korea factory. And if you needed spare parts, do they that they shipped overnight from here back to the UK? Yeah, um, I mean the spare parts department is literally two or three desks just down there. I can go and bang bang my hand on his desk and say get that part out today you know and it works it works it works really well